So our first technical talk will be presented by Zijun Liu, research scientist from Meta Reality uh, Lab. Her title of talk is Mobile LLM Optimizing Sub-Billion Parameter Language Models on, for On-Device Use Cases. Zijun, the floor is yours. Hi, thanks. Um, thank you for the intro introduction. Yeah, I'm, my name is Zichun Liu. It's a pleasure to be here and share our recent progress in deploying large language models on the edge devices. Uh, in the past few months, our team has been working on optimizing LLMs to operate efficiently on the devices such as smartphones and the wearables uh, while preserving their performance and accuracy. Mm. So to, to accomplish this, we have developed architecture design tailored for LLMs with super billion parameters. The architecture of the proposed mobile LLM have been optimized by considering the constraints of storage limitation in the edge devices. This work was conducted in collaboration with my colleagues at Meta, and the paper is available on archive. Mm. So when it comes to on-device LLMs, there are typically three questions that come to comes into mind. Mm. First, why do we want to put LLM on device? Second, how can we run LLM in on device? What are the constraints? And third, how well do this small model um, perform? So in, the pre in this presentation, I will address these questions and provide you with a comprehensive overview of LLMs on device. <clears throat> Uh, so contemporary LLM products such as ChatGPT, they primarily operate in cloud environments. However, there is also a growing need for running LLMs on the portable devices such as smartphones, watches, and AR VR glasses, uh, which requires smaller models. These devices have limited memory and computational resources, requiring specialized LLM designs to meet the constraints. For example, the memory hierarchy of the mobile devices is depicted, depicted in the right figure. The DRAM capacity of a phone ranging from 6 GB to 12 GB. As DRAM is shared with operation systems and other applications, a mobile app should not exceed 10% of the DRAM. Therefore, we are motivated to develop sub-billion sized mobile LMs that can efficiently utilize the limited resources available on the device. Mm. While still, uh, and uh, by doing so, we can enable efficient on-device language assistant, which has the potential to rev revolutionize the way we interact with our devices. So previous small LLMs were not optimized under this model size constraint, resulting in suboptimal performance. For example, OPT and GPT-Neo were designed for 100 billion model parameters, uh, while super billion models are only an intermediate byproduct of the larger models following the scaling law. Pythia is an, an analyzed suit uh, that did not design architectures for small models. Uh, therefore, to fully exploit the potential of super billion size models and improve their performance, we carefully change architecture for mobile LMs to utilize the weights more, eff uh, more effectively. Mm. Results show that it, mobile LM achieves significant accuracy boost compared to the previous SOTA models of similar size, as we can see in the figure. Mm. So what did we do for mobile LMs? In the design of mobile LMs, we first experimented various techniques proposed in super billion parameter models and found out three techniques that were truly beneficial for super billion size models, including sweet glue, embedding sharing, and grouped query attention. Um, we built a strong baseline by integrating these techniques. Ad additionally, we propose using deeper architectures and also develop an immediately, um, immediate blockwise layer sharing method to further boost accuracy without increasing the model size. Mm. Now, let's dive into the specific details of each design choices and uh, uh, how they contribute to the overall performance of mobile LLM. Mm. First, we follow Lama paper to use Swiglu in the feed-forward network, replacing the Velina FC, Relu FC structure in the OBT models. With this change, the performance of a, a 125 million model is boosted by 1.3 points on the serial reasoning task. Mm. Then, there is a 
um, prevent belief from the scaling law paper suggests that the large language model performance is primarily determined by the number of parameters, the training data set, and the training iterations. Uh, this belief concludes that the architectural design have negligible impact on the LLM performance. However, our findings indicate that this may not hold true for smaller models. Specifically, our experimental results reveal that for small models with limited, cap limited capacity, increasing the depth is more crucial compared to using more channels for improving the performance. We conducted a study involving training nine models with around one, uh, 125 million parameters and 10 models with around 350 million parameters. Each design was similar size, but varied in terms of depth and width. Our experiments consistently demonstrate that deeper and thinner models outperform their shallower and wider counterparts on, on eight zero-shot com uh, common sense reason tasks, as well as question answering and the reading, compre reading comprehension benchmarks. As shown in the figure, those red lines denoting the deeper networks almost always outperform those green lines with shallower networks. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, in several billion scale language models, the embedding layers make up a substantial proportion of the parameter count. For example, in a 125 million parameter model, the input and output embedding layers each comprise 16 million parameters, accounting for over 20% of the total parameters. However, the proportion of embedding width size is significantly lower in large language models, such as Lama 7B and Lama 70B, uh, where the input and output embedding only account for 4% and 1% of the total parameters, um, respectively. Mm. This difference makes may explain why embedding sharing was initially proposed and implemented in OPT models, but was later disregarded in the recent design of large language models like Lama. Mm. In, the develop, in the development of several billion scale language models, we revisited the concept of input-output embedding sharing. By sharing the embeddings, we can reduce the number of parameters by 12% while only experiencing a marginal 0.2 point drop in average accuracy for the 20, 125 million model, uh, as shown in the table. And this efficiency gain can be further leveraged by reallocating the safe parameters to add more layers, resulting in a more compact and performant model architecture. Additionally, we incorporate group uh, group query attention into the baseline model design. This technique can be seen as another form of weight reutilization, whereas the number of query heads is n times that of the key value heads, and the KV heads is re uh, repeated n times in computing the attention score. By reducing the number of KV heads to a quarter of the query heads, we achieve significant 10% uh, reduction in model size while only experience a less than 0.2% drop in accuracy. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, recall that our findings suggest that deeper layers are beneficial for small language models. This led us to investigate layer sharing as a strategy to further increase the number of hidden layers without incurring any additional uh, model storage costs. Surprisingly, our experimental, uh, our experimental results show that accuracy enhancement can be achieved by simply replacing uh, simply repeating transformer blocks without requiring any architectural modification or any increase in model size. We further examine three different way sharing strategies as shown in the figure, including immediate, immediate block sh sharing in figure B, which computes a block twice, the so repeat all over sharing, which repeat after all the layers are computed, and the so reverse sharing. Mm. Our results in the table in indicate that the repeat over layer sharing strategy yields the best performance compared to other sharing strategies. However, considering the hardware memory hierarchy, 
the SRAM for computing is typically limited to around 20 megabytes, which, which is usually only sufficient for hold a single transformer block. Therefore, placing shared weights in the uh, cache and computing it twice uh, immediately can avoid the need to uh, can always need for transfer weights between SRAM and DRAM, uh, which results in um, improved overall execution speed for the autoregressive inference. Mm. Consequently, we choose the immediate blockwise sharing uh, in our model design. So, uh, so by incorporating all of our design choices, we have designed mobile LLM, which demonstrates the state of the art performance. In the still short common sense reasoning tasks, mobile LLM 125 mini model outperforms pre sold 125 models by 4.1 points, and the mobile LLM 350 million achieves mm, a 5% improvement. More impressively, the mobile, uh, mobile LLM 150 million model even achieved comparable accuracy to the pre previous SOTA models with twi twice as many parameters. These results highlight the effectiveness of our approach compared to the previous work that utilized shallow layer designs for the small models. Also, the latency results in the table reflect that mobile LM can execute at the speed of 50 tokens per second, which is around 10 times faster than the previous solution using 7B models. Uh, through weight sharing and doubling the number of layers, mobile LM Mobile LM LS incurs only a 2.2% increase in loading and initialization time and a mere 2.6% overhead in the execution time. And this is benefit from the data locality. In contrast, a model with double the number of layers without weight sharing exhibits a substantial increase in almost two times the rise in the load and the execution time. Furthermore, we fine tune the pre-trained mobile LM models on the chart data set and evaluate it on the APACA eval and MT bench benchmarks. As shown in the table, uh, the mobile LM models significantly outperform previous SOTA 7 million scale models, even surpassing the model with 1 billion parameters. Notably, the mobile LLM 350 million layer sharing model achieves an impressive win rate of Six, uh, forty-eight percent when compared to the baseline GPT-3 model. Considering that the self-win rate of GPT-3 is fifty, uh, it is remarkable that mobile LM with only three fifty million parameters can achieve comparable chart performance to this baseline model. Uh, here we also present some examples of chart output generated by mobile LM uh, 125 million model in the response to the user's question. From this example, we can see that mobile LM is capable of generating coherent and relevant responses, and it can answer this question well. Hmm. For example, it's asking like, uh, what's, the, uh, uh, what's the benefits for mindful working? It's, it's answers like uh, in, improve the position, posture, uh, increase the flexibility, something uh, better sleep, uh, something like that. Mm. And here is another example. Despite its small size, mobile M 150 million model is able to e uh, effectively understand the question and generate reasonably well responses. Um, these results highlights the significance highlights the significant potential of utilizing civilian LLM models for their own device applications. Mm. Okay, uh, that's all for my presentation. Thanks for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Zichun, for a very um, helpful talk for everyone. And so I'm just going over a couple of questions and we want to also stay within the time. Um, so I start with um, the last question, which I believe you already went over it, and you can briefly uh, answer. So the question is that, can you go over what exactly has been modified in mobile LLM for low power? And uh, did you use the baseline? And then modifying it? Yes, like, uh, uh, so we did so, uh, several changes to like, uh, mm, 
improves accuracy of mobile LM while make it uh st still have like uh, similar size as previous SOTA models. So we made several changes. First is SWIGLU, which is uh, like uh, uh, activation activation function in FFN proposed in the uh, LAMA model. And the uh, second is uh, embedding sharing, uh, which is uh, which is proposed in uh, OPT model and uh, like uh, uh, like similar works in OPT. Uh, and also third is uh, multi carrier attention. Uh, so those three are inherited from the super billion size models. Um, uh, and we also tested a lot of other techniques, but uh, but they don't work well. For example, the MOE doesn't work well for some uh, super billion size models. And so we incorporate these three model, uh, three techniques in our model design. And also further, we propose using deeper layers for the mobile apps to capture um, more abstract concepts because transformers need like deeper layers in order to uh, learn more hierarchical representations. So we recommend like more than 30 layers for the mobile um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, architecture design, even, even though it is small. Mm, and also we propose layer sharing to further increase depth and we find it's still useful. So that's basically the changes we, we made to the... Yeah, to the other them. two questions, uh, which are kind of related, uh, have you deployed the, your models on real devices and uh, which platform you have used and what is the latency has been mm -hmm. measured on the platforms? A video platform or like what, what platform? Uh, oh, hard, sorry, hardware platforms. Yeah, uh, yes, we, like, well, we deployed on the... Oh, this, oh, forget to mention the size. This is measured on the iPhone 13 Pro uh, with iOS uh, 17. Uh, and this, we measured the latency, so both load, loading time, initialization time, is, and the execution time. Uh, our mobile um, 125mm model can execute at uh, uh, like uh, 15 milliseconds per token, which is like uh, around 60 token per second. So uh, another question is a little, um, again, multiple um, questions and multiple answers. So what type of embedding, uh, like sparse, dense, are efficient for these type of edge device environment deployment, particularly um, how did you efficiently vectorize embedding? Yes, that's a good question. Like we uh, didn't change the embedding. We know there is uh, some like, uh, adaptive embeddings or sparse embeddings, but we didn't, uh, in this work, we didn't change the embedding. We just keep like uh, this uh, 32K embeddings uh, here, and uh, we just share the input and output embeddings, which means we use uh, like embedding matrix as uh, weights in the output fully connected layers, and we, we train to jointly, and so that uh, the uh, weights for converting the embedding uh, to the embedding tokens can be also used for converting the final uh, output embeddings to the logics. Yeah. Sounds good. There are actually uh, one more question and I wanna just have a uh, to answer very shortly because we are running out of time. So again, is it more on the hardware point of view, uh, why the layer should go deep, uh, which basically assuming that it requires much hardware resources? Oh, can you repeat the question again? So again, from the hardware point of view, why the layer should go deep? Oh, from actually, uh, the deep um, using deep layers is from the perspective of accuracy, like we because we find that deep layers can perform better on uh, on like various tasks in terms of accuracy than the shallow layers. But on on the hardware point of view, also compare uh the mobile LLM with the previous uh, uh, models like OPTs with shallow layer distance and say uh, like uh, have similar latency uh, in on the same hardware. Uh, so I so we just choose deeper layers. Yeah. But for hardware thank you very much, Zichun. A big thank you again to all of our sponsors that make this possible. Uh, in particular thank you to the executive strategic partners of Tiny ML. Qualcomm AI, Advancing AI Research to Make Efficient AI Ubiquitous, also Sentient Making Edge AI a Reality, the Platinum Strategic Partners, EmbedUR, uh, Sony AI, De uh, Deploy Vision AI at the Edge at Scale, 
the gold strategic partners arm edge impulse infinian renaissance st micro and synaptics and the silver strategic partners which we have here ai zip arduino brain chip efficient green waves gravity imax the magimob in its era Nota AI, NXP, Procter & Gamble, Schneider Electric, SenseML, Silicon Labs, and TDK. So that concludes our first day. Don't forget we have a lot more action back agenda for tomorrow as well, starting at the same time. So that concludes our session for today. And thank you for joining everyone. See you tomorrow.